Hello and welcome to this week's AFCB TV preview show. Once again, I'm joined by BBC Radio Solent's Chris Temple and we have plenty to get through this morning. On the show today, not only will we be previewing this weekend's game against West Ham United, but we'll also be having a look at what happened when the AFCB TV cameras followed Lewis Cook out and about. But before all of that, there's just one place to start. Last weekend, the Cherries opened their Premier League account with a 2-0 win over Cardiff. Let's take a look at the goals. For their one previous Premier League campaign, they finished rock bottom. Here come the Cherries, though. Wilson in some space in the penalty area now. Driven wide, pulls it back. Fraser! Arguably the best Cherries' best player in pre-season is the man who opens their scoring account in the Premier League. Ryan Fraser, 23rd minute, nice build-up down the right-hand side. And as it was pulled back, the wee man made no mistake, stroked it beyond Etheridge. It's Bournemouth 1, Cardiff 0. Cherry's working hard in central midfield to win it back. You haven't missed anything, by the way. There was a stoppage, but now the Cherry's coming forward. Callum Wilson in behind all the moment. Wilson in the penalty here. Tumbles down. It's a penalty. It wasn't a huge amount of protest, I have to say, but no, it wasn't. not clear cut. Anyway, Kevin Friend gave it. Callum Wilson is going to take it. Waited a long time for that goal on the final day of last season to break his long drought. Can he kick off this season on day one by hitting the back of the net? from the penalty spot. It's Wilson against Everidge in the Cardiff goal, saved by the goalkeeper. Palmed away, down to his left. Ball up towards the far side, Cherry's still going. Francis battling away, right side of the area, into the box goes Francis. Still going to the byline. Wilson! Yes! There it is! That'll do! Callum Wilson up and running for the season after that missed opportunity earlier on. And the Cherries put it to bed. It's been a sticky 20 minutes or so with a bit of threat from Cardiff. But Bournemouth have been the better side overall and will kick off the season with three points on the opening day. Bournemouth 2, Cardiff 0, Callum Wilson. Well, there we go. Goals from Ryan Fraser and Callum Wilson ensured that the Cherries got off to an excellent start in the Premier League. You can watch the full 90 minutes of the game on AFCB TV for free. Now, Chris, an excellent start to the Premier League season for the Cherries. Their first win on the opening day in the division. Exactly what they needed as well after the previous three seasons as well. And I think as well, when you've put in all the hard work over pre-season and fans obviously turn up with a couple of new signings, albeit they weren't playing, but uh, or one of them was, um, and expectations about what's going to happen in the season. If it doesn't happen on the first day, everyone's like, oh, blimey, come on. So to, to get it up and running with that, I think, as we said last week, it was probably quite a nice start in that Cardiff, um, you know, finding their feet in the division. Uh, a lot of people thought they might struggle. I actually have to say what we said last week was that it looked like it would be a tough season for them the 90 minutes we saw here um, last weekend I think it will be a tough season for them but for Bournemouth ideal way clean sheet as well what a bonus to, uh, to start the season and yeah that clean sheet it's, it's so crucial last season they got the lowest amount of clean sheets in the league that will be, give them such a confidence boost yeah only six last season in total and one of them was of course in the, the final game of last season here against against Swansea so to get a clean sheet up and running and Asmir Begovic he made one really good save didn't he uh, in, the, in the game at the south end of the ground that goal mouth scramble when it was 1-0 which could have been a, a key moment but he didn't have a whole lot to do otherwise in terms of saves. So, yeah, I think the, the defensive unit and, and the manager were pretty pleased all round with the, with the way they restricted Cardiff, yeah. And a really good team performance. Who impressed you the most on the Cherry side? 
Uh, I like the look of David Brooks. First, the first uh, look I'd had at him. Uh, I hadn't seen any of him in pre-season, so yeah, I thought he, you know, showed a good good amount of confidence. He, of course, he gave the ball away a couple of times, but he's a, a young lad on his his Premier League debut, and he admitted afterwards actually that Cardiff was probably quite a good start for him because he played against them last season, so he knew quite a lot about them. Uh, so he he a good 65 minutes from him, and we saw the the crowd's reception uh, for him at the end of the game uh, when he came off that they thought he'd done well as well. Uh, Ryan Fraser again was the one we talked about last week about pre-season form and he backed that up with a goal as well and again great for Callum Wilson to, to get his uh, column up and running after what was a, a sticky few months in the second half of last season he finished obviously on a high at Burnley scored in pre-season and and it's great to have uh, I guess you're out and out number nine straight up and running in the first game as well so yeah those three and I think you know defensively you could pick out the whole unit and say they defended really well so yep all in all good start and obviously Callum Wilson this year he's had a full pre-season how much could that could that show in last week's game against Cardiff? Yeah, I mean, he was a, he was a nuisance, wasn't he? He always is. Uh, I, I think the penalty was possibly slightly fortunate. Um, you know, there, there was probably a bit of contact, but I think, you know, obviously for him, that was a moment he won't want to look back on in terms of the way uh, he didn't manage to score. But luckily, the, the goal at the end of the game put that out of everybody's minds. But yeah, to have Callum fit and firing and confident, I think, as well. Uh, he's been working really hard. There was lots of social media videos of him running around Kings Park over the summer and doing extra strength and conditioning work. So hopefully that will pay off. And yeah, as you say, uh, to have your number nine fit and firing right from the get go, that's a huge bonus. Yeah. Well, one person who wasn't involved last week was Lewis Cook, but the AFCB TV cameras went out and about and discussed all things football, both on and off the pitch. Take a look. And you always seem to me like such a calm fellow. Has there ever been a calm? Yeah, calm. I'm not calm. Ask anyone at football, I'm not calm. In what way? What, in what way are you not calm? I'm calm now off the pitch, but when I'm in training, I'm bad. I just, uh, I think I'm too competitive. Yeah. It's not a bad thing, but I just, I've need to try and. I've always been like that since I was little. When I was little at Leeds, I was always. We used to have these assessments at the end of each month, and it was, yeah, you're doing fine. I'm really happy with you, but you just need to stop shouting at shouting at everyone and things like that so um. so the next question you like that when you go bowling when you're playing board games with your family at Christmas uh, <laughs> board games maybe um, I played Monopoly once with my missus and we had a big argument because she said she won but I won um, but you're going to tell me this was years ago but you've not let go no it was yet. probably like <laughs> a year ago I don't know something like that uh, no I'm not off the pitch I'm not too bad um, but I think on the pitch I just, I just want to win so well, the full interview with Lewis Cluck, including how he nearly missed a call from Gareth Southgate, is available for free on AFCB TV. Now then, turning our attention to West Ham United, Lewis Cook, he obviously didn't play last week. Can you see him forging his way back into the side this week? I mean, that was the, the standout, uh, I guess, a name on the team sheet or name that wasn't on the team sheet last week. I think everybody would have thought that Lewis Cook would be in there. Um, Obviously, he did have a busy summer with the England under-21s. Um, I don't know whether that was any part of the fact that... What I do know about anyhow is that if a player isn't quite right in terms of his levels and the, the numbers that they read on, whatever they read them on iPads and things these days, if the numbers aren't quite right, then Eddie won't pick people. Um, so the only reason I can think... I can't imagine it was tactical. Um, there wasn't really anything given away by Eddie after the game as to why he didn't choose Lewis Cook, other than to say, you know, his time will come. So, um, yeah, I, I was as surprised as anybody to see him not play last week. Uh, a winning team obviously I don't know you know Eddie often likes to stick with a winning team uh, Andrew Sermon and Dan Gosling to be fair I thought had pretty good games last week uh, so it's, it's, I guess when you look long term yeah, everyone would think Cook and Lerma would be the, the central midfield pairing and here we are at the moment obviously Jefferson Lerma Eddie was quite coy in his press conference said we'll see if he's involved so I, personally I don't think he will be um, he's probably getting closer but maybe this is a week too soon um, but yeah so to, to not see Lewis Cook involved I, I, I think he might be on the bench again, if you're if I'm honest. I think Eddie might stick with the, the winning midfield. But again, he's very much a horses for courses manager. He might have seen something in West Ham that uh, he thinks Lewis Cook would be a better option. So we shall see. Who, who knows with Eddie's team selection? You never quite know. And in terms of West Ham, they've obviously made a lot of summer signings. At this stage of the season, is that more of a help or a hindrance trying to integrate them into the side? 
Well, I think for West Ham, anything better than last season is going to be a help. Uh, it, was a, it was a pretty sorry campaign for them, albeit saying that, you know, they flirted with relegation for a long time, but actually finished only one place below Bournemouth in the end in, in 13th. But the board had to put their hand in their pocket there just to, uh, I guess, appease fans and show there is some ambition there. Um, you know, those horrible scenes last year with fans protesting and all sorts. Hopefully for West Ham, that's long gone now and they can uh, try and restore a bit of footballing pride. You know, some of the names they brought in, £40 million on Felipe Anderson from, from Lazio. Um, you know, they, they've Jack Wilshire obviously is the one name again that will be resonating with with Bournemouth fans. Another move, I guess, like the move here for him to try and sort of reinvigorate himself um, as a as a as a full time player somewhere else. Um, obviously, they brought in Fabianski in goal uh, amongst other players. I like the young lad Ryan Fredericks they brought in from Fulham, who was a good free transfer at right back. He was one of their outstanding players last year in in helping Fulham get promoted. So he's one who I think they've got a good deal for being a free transfer moving across London. But, you know, all in all, Arnautovic is still a pain, isn't he? Uh, we saw him score against Bournemouth last season. They look, a, they look a decent team on paper this year. Manuel Pellegrini, a manager who's won the Premier League. It's always interesting when a manager who's won the Premier League with someone like City then comes back and manages the team lower down who he's not going to win the league with. You think of David Moyes managing Man United and then coming back at West Ham, albeit short term. So for Pellegrini to come back and take on the challenge of, of sort of restoring West Ham as to be a top half side is, is a bold move from him, I think. But... You know, he's what a, what a history he's got. Real Madrid manager. You know, he's oh, he's just had a little spell coining it in in China. Um, so I, I'm sure he'll be keen to put last week's thumping at Liverpool behind them. Not a great start for him, but Liverpool are, are going to thump a few people this year. Bournemouth know only too well from the back end of last season how difficult Anfield is. So, yeah, West Ham, are a revamped team. Uh, I think they'll be a different team this year. And at home, obviously, first home game, it, that might be quite a tricky place to go, I think. And obviously you mentioned the Liverpool result last week for West Ham. How much can we really read into that given that Liverpool are, are going to turn a lot of teams over this year? Yeah, not so much, I don't think. I think, as you mentioned earlier about West Ham being a new team and settling down, um, that was probably part of it. But Liverpool, you know, they, they hit the ground running um, with, with the way they, uh, they dispatched West Ham last week. So as far as, you know, you talk about Cardiff being a good opening fixture for Bournemouth, I think when West Ham saw Liverpool away as their first fixture, that's a, that's a bit of a nightmare for them. So I think that will be, a, I don't know how much of a form guide that is to this weekend. I think you should write that one off, really. Um, I think Bournemouth will face a, a much sterner challenge than, than a team who lost 4-0 last week. And of course, last year, both games with West Ham ended in draws. Can you see it playing out that way again this year? I think, I think I'd take a draw tomorrow uh, as things stand right now. The game here, obviously the 3-3, was uh, had absolutely everything going on, including Callum Wilson's uh, moment of magic uh, with that, that last minute equaliser in the 3-3. And of course, the game up there, Bournemouth should have won, really. Uh, worked hard to take the lead through Ryan Fraser with about 20 to go. And then I think that lead only lasted seven or eight minutes. So I know that was a frustration. And, and speaking to Charlie Daniels this morning, he said, actually, that's one of the games they were shown back in pre-season. Um, I guess as one of the learning points from last season was the fact they let that lead slip, having worked so hard to get into it, uh, to get into the lead. So uh, I think I'd take a draw tomorrow for sure at the moment. Um, but you just never know, you know, those sort of big pitches and things, they, they can suit the way Bournemouth play. A lot of space at the London Stadium. It's a big pitch. So, uh, again, if West Ham can't, don't quite hit it early on against their, uh, with their new players in front of their fans, first home game, you can see Bournemouth sneaking something. But if you were asking me to nail a fiver down right now, and I haven't got a fiver, uh, I would say a draw. And of course, you mentioned a couple of, of West Ham's big players, and now to Fitch Wilshire. Are they the ones to look out for tomorrow? I'm interested to see how Felipe Anderson goes. Any, you're interested to see how any any player at £40 million pounds goes, for, for sure, from, from Lazio. Um, you know, they've brought in a couple. They've brought in Diop at centre-half as well, who we, uh, we haven't seen yet. They've brought in Carlos Sanchez, uh, an international teammate of uh, Jefferson Lerma as well, who only £3 million. Pounds, he looks a, looks a decent buy as well. Um, and obviously, you know, they've, they've lost Lanzini to a long-term injury. That's a big blow for them as well. But uh, And I think they had to strengthen the goalkeeping area as well, as well. Joe Hart, obviously, last year didn't go so well for him. Um, but yeah, I, I guess Felipe Anderson is the one that uh, any player that comes in from a foreign league who's £40 million, pounds, you're thinking, well, he's going to hopefully light up the league as we're hoping to see from Jefferson Lerma at £25 million when he eventually gets the nod as well. So yeah, I, would, I suppose Anderson probably is the one I'm looking forward to seeing. If he, if he clicks with Arnautovic, um, then they'll, they'll cause a few defensive problems this year for sure. Well, it's certainly going to be a very interesting weekend. That's all from us today. If you are going to West Ham, have a very safe journey. And if you're not, make sure you tune in to AFCB TV to hear Chris and the Radio Solent team for free on live commentary. Thanks for joining us.